Physician, mental health expert, and best-selling author, Dr. Gaber Mate sits down with the Grey Zone's Aaron Mate, his son, to analyze how Russiagate was able to take hold of U.S. society following Donald Trump's election. Let's take a gander. Thunderbolt of no proof of collusion. There were articles about how people are disappointed about this finding. Now, disappointment means that you were expecting something, you wanted something to happen, and it didn't happen. So that means that some people wanted Mueller to find evidence of collusion, which means that emotionally they were invested in it. It wasn't just that they wanted to know the truth. They actually wanted the truth to look a certain way. They had a certain expectation of what the truth was going to be. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And whenever we want to look the truth, we want the truth to look a certain way, there's some reason it has to do with their own emotional needs and not just with the concern for reality. And in, in politics in general, although we think that people make decisions on intellectual grounds based on facts and beliefs, very often actually people's dynamics are driven by emotional forces that they're not even aware of in themselves. And I really, as I observed this whole Russiagate phenomenon from the beginning, it really seemed to me that there was a lot of emotionality in it that had little to do with the actual facts of the case. Lot Very of, interesting point. If you look back, a lot of emotion, not a lot of facts. Yeah. That's Russiagate trauma. There's no question that for a lot of people in this country, the election of Trump was a traumatic event. Now, when a trauma reaction happens, we just to say you're hurt and you're pained and you're confused and you're scared and you're bewildered, there's basically two things you can do about it. One is you can own that I'm pained, and I'm hurt, I'm bewildered, and I'm really scared, and then try and look at what happened to bring me to that situation. Or you can, instead of dealing with those emotions, come up with some kind of explanation that makes you feel better about them. So that I've got this pain, I've got this bewilderment, I've got this fear. So rather than looking at what does it say about American society that a man like this could even run for office, let alone get elected? Mm -hmm. What does it say about American society that so many people are actually enrolled in believing that this man could be any kind of a savior? What does that say about the divisions and the conflicts and the contradictions? Ooh. It's He's asking all kinds of questions. Yeah. Ooh. Continuing. And, and the genuine problems in this culture and how do we address those issues. You can look at that or you can say there must be a devil somehow behind all this and that devil is a foreign power and his name is Putin and his country is Russia. Now you've got a simple explanation that doesn't invite you or, 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 or necessitate that you explore your own pain and your own fear and your own trauma. So I really believe that, that really this uh, Russiagate narrative was a uh, on the part of a lot of people, a, a sign of genuine upset as something genuinely upsetting. But rather than dealing with the upset, it was an easier way to, um, in a sense, draw off the energy of it into some kind of a believable and a comforting narrative. It's much more comforting to believe that some, some enemy is doing this to us than to look at what does it say about us as a society. I mean, there was a massive denial of the actual dynamics in American society that led to the election of this traumatized and traumatizing individual as president. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. And also, I, everyone's traumatized. Yeah. I didn't realize that Trump was traumatized. Well, that sets me up. Oh, Donald Trump is a mm, clearest example of a traumatized politician one can ever see. He's in denial of reality all the time. He is um, self-aggrandizing. He his fundamental self-concept is that of a nobody. So he has to make himself huge and big all the time and keep proving to the world how powerful and smart, you know, what kind of degrees he's got and how smart he is. And all. It's, a, it's a compensation for a terrible self-image. Mm -hmm. He can't pay attention to anything, which means that his brain is too scattered because it was too painful for him to pay attention. What does this all come down to? the childhood that we know that he had in, 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 in the home of a dictatorial, child-disparaging father 
in a very weak... Fred Trump, his father, yeah. In, 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 ...who demeaned his children mercilessly. One of Trump's brothers dragged himself to death. Mm -hmm. And Trump compensates for all that by trying to make himself as big and powerful and successful as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a clear Trump example. I'm not saying this to invite sympathy for Trump's politics. I'm just describing that that's who the man is. Mm -hmm. And the fact that such a traumatized individual can be elected to the position of what they call the most powerful person in the world speaks to a traumatized society. Ooh. Wow. Traumatized society yeah. votes for the traumatized president. It's very interesting. Also, I didn't know that about Trump's uh, brothers. Yeah, brother. Brother, yeah. yeah. Trump does not drink alcohol. I did not know that either. And, and like individuals can be in denial, a society can be in denial. So this society is deeply in denial about its own trauma, and particularly, in this case, about the trauma of that election. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, one last clip rounding us off, dealing with trauma. One, one way to deal with trauma is denial of it. Mm -hmm. The other way is to project uh, onto other people things you don't like about yourself. Now, it's only a matter of historical fact and no serious person, no serious student of history can possibly deny how the United States has interfered in the internal politics of just about every nation on earth. The United States has interfered <laughs> with the internal politics of about every nation on earth. It's interfered with yeah. a lot of internal politics. And interfered, by the way, is a kind term. Yeah. You, know, you talk about what the, what the, what the actual physical... I'm talking about mass murder. Ma manifestation. <laughs> exactly. It's mass murder in many for, cases. For yeah. example, in Chile, yeah. you know, where, where there's an elected <laughs> government that, that America cheerfully overthrows, yeah. they even boasts about it. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, not to mention the current interference in Venezuela, the internal politics. Yeah, don't but, bring up Venezuela. Yeah. Don't bring up Venezuela. Don't bring up, don't bring up anything. <laughs> Russia's bad. Not to mention... Uh, how, as you've pointed out, and many others have pointed out, and Newsweek boasts about it on its cover, about how the United States helped Boris Yeltsin get elected. Yankees in, to the in, rescue. In, you, know, to, you know, so e even if it's true what the Russians have, even if it's the worst thing that's alleged about the Russians is true, it's not even one minuscule <laughs> proportion of what Oops. America's public acknowledged Oops. it has done all around the world. And so this rage that we project then, and, and this bad guy image that we're to the Russians, it's simply a mirror, a, a very inadequate mirror, of what America publicly and openly and repeatedly does all around the world. Now, you may think that's a good thing to do. I'm not arguing about that. I'm not arguing politics. All I'm saying is projection is when we, when we project onto somebody else the things that we do ourselves. Beautifully said. Very interesting. I really enjoyed that. I hope we can talk more about this later. So email us, askahealthytalkshow.com, because what he said was kind of really meta. Yeah. Because <laughs> you really have to take time and reflect about your own personal politics, how the U.S. operates. So that's, that was a lot to unpack. Yes. But we'd like to continue this conversation later. About the trauma. Yeah. So contact us, email us, askahealthytalkshow.com. We may talk about it more in the post stream, but... All, all I'll say is, you know, this is why we got to be kinder to one another. We all have our traumas, and I don't think we ever stopped campa campaigning from the last election. We're already gearing up for the next one, but we just need to love each other. Yep. Reconnect. Love and light. Yes. Remember that we're all humans, whether we're blue or red. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's all have crazy sex. <laughs> Does that lead into our next story? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. For more Healthy Talk Show, please consider subscribing to our podcast over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash subscribe. It's free. Twitter and Instagram, at Healthy Talk Show, drop the W. We record the podcast live Mondays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash live. Love and light.